Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA, and welcome to another episode of For the Win. By the way, I know a lot of you guys have been enjoying this. I'm having a blast with this series because it's so fun to look back at some of these amazing vehicles we've shot before, do comparisons, and actually consider if I was gonna get to pick one of these cars, which one would I pick? And it's oftentimes it's a big challenge to me. So today's episode, we look at two Corvettes. Somebody recently I saw in the comments said it'd be cool to do an episode of C2 Corvettes. The first C2 Corvette that came up was our friend Greg Thurman, and I went, well, gosh, if we're doing that one, and Paul thought the same thing at the same exact time as I did. It's so wide-bodied and so radical and so purpose-built. Why don't we do another Corvette that we shot, but not a C2, it's a C3 Corvette that's also a wide-body, purpose-built for autocrossing and road coursing. So both of these cars were built with the intent of competing in the Optima Challenge as well as other road course events and autocross events. Let's start off with our friend Greg Thurman's beautiful, orange, crazy, wide body, aggressive, bad ass C2 Corvette. I love this car. And getting to drive with Greg in this car is just pure insanity. I mean, this is a guy that's been racing for years, has won Optima before, he's won multiple autocross events. He's a real driver. But he's also a builder and his primary focus is C2 Corvettes. He knows this car. He's mastered the build of a C2 Corvette. So let's look at what Greg did with his 65. He left the stock frame to the car, but he did massive reinforcement to it, knowing that he was going to give it power. He set it all on C4 suspension, which is a massive upgrade from a C2 Corvette. I know vets have gotten better since then in every generation after suspension wise, but the C4 is no slouch of a car, even though it was a bit of the joke of Corvette, I think, for a while there. So at the heart of this thing, he did a Lingenfelter built LS7, the 630 horsepower version of that. It's a dry sump, exhaust on it's loud and proud. He put Black Widow on it with a three inch exhaust custom built by Greg himself. I love the rear view of this car because he did cutouts. And if you go back and watch the full video, Greg explains it wasn't actually for the aesthetic. It was to create airflow. He compared it to the old Grand Sport Corvette that GM built to race. And if you have ever seen the Grand Sport Corvette, the entire rear section of that car has holes punched in it to get the air out. Cause these things have a tendency to get some lift at higher speeds. But what I love about it is the aesthetic that you get from it allows you to see what's going on back there. He did this crazy cantilevered independent rear on this car. You wouldn't get to see it had he left the complete lower balance on. So I absolutely love that look. He widened the hell out of this thing. He went six inches wider on the rear, running forge line wheels, and here's another one. This is a car, again, purpose built, you guys. He's running 315 squared on this car. It gives me perspective. My Shelby GT350 runs a 305 at the rear. He's running a 315 squared on this car. Absolutely love it. The Lingenfelter LS7's made it to a Tremec Magnum six speed. Greg did the Magnum because he said it's built really to deal with the horsepower that he's making in this car. It's got a Dana rear end on it. It's all built to deal with being pounded on, which by the way, Greg said he built this car a little over, God, at this point, it's gotta be seven years ago now. Still the same transmission, still the same engine in the car, proving that this car can take a serious beating. Greg chose to go with bare brakes on his car, manual brakes, six piston front, four piston rears. One of my favorite things that Greg did on this car, and we'll cut to it to, to give you just like some sense of how intense this car brakes, it's got full ABS. He showed me what the braking was like on this car, and it is so intense. But we can stop really fast, too. God! <laughs> Just to give you a little taste of what it can stop. He really wanted to give me a sense of how intense it is, and I can tell you flat out, probably some of the most intense braking I've felt on any car across the board, period. So that's the mechanical elements, the exterior of the car. The interior on this car, all purpose built. Yeah, there's carbon fiber stuff in here, but to be honest with you, it's not like perfectly fitted, beautiful, refined. It's race car stuff. Everything about this car is race car. It's race seats, it's harnesses, 
the harnesses you really need in this car when Greg takes you for a drive. But everything about it is full purpose built. There's nothing beautiful on the interior other than it does have a couple of creature comforts because to compete for the Optima Ultimate Street Car, it has to be a street car. So it has to have things like heating, AC, it's got to have audio. But this is really a purpose built car for driving hard. So let's jump in with Greg and go for a little rip and I promise you, there's not much more thrilling than getting a ride in this car, getting a ride in this car with Greg Thurman driving, and especially when he nails the brakes. So let's go for a rip. You can thank Black Widow for the drone. Yeah, Black Widow doesn't build quiet stuff, do they? No.
so much fun. <laughs> Let's take a look at our friend Garrett's car here. It's a 1970 C3 Corvette, and this car originally was an LT1 car. He didn't cut it apart. This car had been cut apart years ago by previous owners somewhere along the way in the 80s where it was raced. It was taken on by a guy named Chris Gonzalez. Chris got partway into it, decided to sell the car. That's when Garrett bought it and took it on. And he stuck with Chris Gonzalez to finish out if I remember correctly, the whole car, feel free to jump back and look at the video we did on this car. By the way, this car does have a name. A lot of great cars do. This one, the color helps it. This car is called Rambo. I'll make jokes about different movie franchises like Fast and Furious, even though I own them all. I will make jokes about Rambo. Now, I don't own them all, but I have seen them all at least more than three times, so. Glad you made it. Good cool. I don't mind the name of this car at all. I actually really like the color that he went with on it. It's, it's very unique for this car. He took it actually from modern Dodge off the modern Dodge Challenger. Now the reason for widening it as much as he did, Garrett, just like Greg, had the intent of going out and not only street driving this car, but autocrossing it, road coursing it. He wanted to compete with it and he competes regularly with this car. I have a lot of friends that do autocross and Garrett's one of the regular guys out there all the time running his car and running hard and he's very competitive in the class so he's running just bitching wide body on this car okay so garrett opted to not go quite as big power wise which he even admits autocross he's got the perfect power to weight on this he went with a built ls6 not a radical build cam head work but he said he's making around 410 at the tire on the car but remember this, this car weighs about 2,700 pounds, so power to weight's pretty nice. He did make it very clear he's underpowered on a road course, but more of his stuff is autocrossing, street driving, having fun driving the car. The LS6 is mated to a Tremec T56 transmission. He had it built to stage two. It's not a radical build, but it definitely can handle the power that the car is making, which as I said before, is not massive power. All the suspension obviously has been massively upgraded on this car, all race car based. He's running forge line wheels on it. He said he's got enough clearance and he thought about doing it, but left it out. But he had the ability to run a 335 square on this car. Instead, he went very small up front. He's running a 315 tire up front and a 335 out the back of this thing. You know, there's a couple things on the exterior I know I've, I've seen people gripe about. You know, some people don't like how wide he went on it. He went wide for the obvious reason to get bigger tires on here. The other thing a lot of people gripe about, and I personally think it's really cool, is the rear spoiler slash wing that he did on here. Yeah, it creates a lot of drag, and yeah, it's not, you know, it's not the prettiest thing. When we're talking pretty cars, I don't, I don't consider this one to be a pretty car. I think it's aggressive. And so the spoiler is very functional. He's driven this car in both settings, with and without, and he said it makes a dramatic difference. It creates a fair amount of downforce out back. Sure, he gets dragged, but he's not worried about high speed stuff. Garrett focuses more of his time on autocrossing and having fun and being competitive in that world. When you go into the interior, it's all about business, man. Autometer gauges. They actually built these seats. These seats are fully built, custom seats. Started with aluminum and built the seat. And they fit the car just perfectly. But everything about it, again, race car stuff. I mean, sure, there's a couple of creature comforts, again, because he competes in the Optima Ultimate Street Car Challenge. So yeah, the car's got audio, it's got AC, it's got heating, it's got all the basic level of creature comforts. But this is again, like Greg's car, purpose built, made to go rip. Speaking of which, let's jump in the car with Garrett and go for a little rip. <laughs> I assume it's your dad that got you interested in cars originally? Yeah, he had a, uh, a 72 Pantera that he bought in the 70s, like 78, 70, 79, and he still has it to this day. Bitchin'. And it's in the garage, and that's just what got me into cars. I, I it's still those. my favorite car to this I, day. Dude, I love them. My brother was into sports, I was into cars, and 
we bought a 67 Camaro and that's kind of what started everything. It was just cars from then on out. just spinning tires and it's controllable yeah it's fun you yes. can do this all day long yes i love feeling the second gear shift you feel it slip it's a little, tiny little bit tiny bit and then but it then grabs, just digs grabs. yeah All right, so the what I likes and what I don't likes. Be honest with you, it's pretty simple, man. I, I really do love both of these cars. The one thing about Garrett's car that I'd love to see a little bit more power in it. I know, I know it's plenty is the truth to do what Garrett does with it. I think it'd be cool to have that car making somewhere in the low 500 range. I would personally love that. But I love the wide body on both these. I love the look all around, the exterior look of these cars. I don't even mind all the, the graphics that Greg put on from all the sponsors on his car because it just adds to the whole race look of it. But I really, there's nothing I could say that I don't like about either of these cars. So the tough choice for me is, I personally like the look of the C3 Corvette more than the C2 Corvette, just a personal taste. So I lean towards Rambo for that. I also lean towards it for, I like the color. It's not quite as bright as the orange of Greg's car. Now that said, Greg's car just completely blew my mind. The power was amazing on it. The ABS is just a knockout, the handling of it. And we barely got to drive it. You know, we didn't get to really feel what it can do on track. Although Greg says I'll get that opportunity soon. For me, for the win, if, if I got to choose one of these cars to be mine, I'd be picking Greg Thurman's C2 Corvette for the win. So let me know which one you guys would pick and why. And thanks as always for hanging out and watching what we do here. I hope you guys are having fun with this series because I really enjoy doing this. It's a lot of fun to look back and compare cars that we've shot in the past. So thanks as always you guys and I'll see you in the next one. All right man, later.